Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Casey. Dominica. Cindy. And I'm Josh. And uh, Casey, I want to welcome you back to the, uh, the twelfth season of our show. Uh, this is your third season here. Thank you. Uh, I want to welcome Dominica for the very first time on the panel. Uh, Dominica has been behind the camera the entire season, but I thought it would be uh, only fitting to have her on uh, discussing some works as well. I'm glad uh, to be here. Thank you. We're glad to have you. And also, uh, for the very first time, is one of my co-workers, uh, her name is Cindy, and she is a, a NaNoWriMo champion, uh, a uh, liaison for the town that okay. we live, like everybody on this panel uh, a published writer. That's true. Mm -hmm. I, I have bought your book, uh, Warfare and Prayer. Oh, you did? Yes, I did. Uh, I'll have to pull it out at some point uh, and get the opportunity. That's good, because uh, you have the only copy that's available now. That's it. That's it. It's no longer available. It's a shame. It should be republished. I may have to rework it a little bit and make it stronger and then re-upload it. I had a little difficulty with the interior of it. Hmm. So, I took it down for now. I'll have to check it out and see what I think. Uh, probably not review it. Maybe review it. Maybe on Goodreads. <laughs> uh, and Dominica will be, uh, has something out uh, pretty much at this time. It's a self-published screenplay, and I'm working hmm. on the novel version of it at the moment. Hmm. In this month of November, uh, would you say it's uh, out? Or? Oh gosh. No. It's still, it's still on its third draft. I'm still working on it. Chopping it up, making it better. And then Casey's published several books. Uh, prose, plays, poetry, yeah. uh, self-help. And uh, one of them, uh, one of his plays, uh, The Day the Rainbow Broke Up, was uh, featured in uh, a local theater. The same theater I actually went to go see uh, On Golden Pond with Jack Klugman. Remember that was 17 years ago. Uh, now we're going to be talking about the uh, book that we will be discussing today, and that is Freshwater by Kweke Am Amizi. Uh, Amizi is a Igbo and a Tamil uh, writer. Uh, they are from Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken, because that's where. In an area by Equatorial Guinea. Mm. I did my research. <laughs> That's good. Mm. The Ada is also from Nigeria, but this novel is also, it's semi-autobiographical. There are a lot of reflections um, there. They're online, but it's also somewhat uh, stream of conscious, uh, consciousness. Uh, but the discussion starter that I have for this one is, who do you believe has the strongest point of view in the telling of this story? Be it we... As Asgara, Ada. Well, I'm gonna say Asgara because they're she. I guess it's, she goes by a she. Yes. Very opinionated and very strong. She has a lot of influence over Ada. She controls and takes over her mind, whether it's sexual intercourse or whether it's blocking out emotions from past trauma. She has a lot of say in the big moments of her life, and I feel like that makes her more influential. She can mm. speak to the other voices in her head. Mm. You know, she's caused others to come, cause issues with her when it comes to things she's facing in her like life. Like Yeshua and yeah. St. Vincent. Uh, but I would say that, I would say that Ada was the weakest of the three. Uh, I think that... She didn't stand up for herself a lot. Not that's, yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. say so. And her, her passages were also very watery. Yeah. No pun intended. But uh, Asagara and we, I think, if you want to look at the antagonizing, unreliable point of view, uh, I don't know if you could say unreli unreliable in the way that it was more like a, a villain, uh, Asagara would be stronger. But I think that if you're looking at a general, this is what it is kind of point of view, uh, I would say that uh, we was the most, that was the point of view that I could rely on the most when it came to 
giving me an yeah. objective Yeah, that's story. what I was going to say. They were the most objective. Ostergaard yes. definitely had opinions mm -hmm. and made them known even when Ada didn't agree with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ostergaard really manipulated things within Ada's life, but in the way that Suits caused him. yeah caused Ada to live a sinful, sinful life, uh, be taken advantage of by plenty of guys. Uh, Soren was probably the uh, sleaziest of them all. I would say the same thing she said, only because she wrote a book of the book. Mm. Um, I kind of was, as weird as it sounds, once I found out there was a saint, Vincent, I guess his name was, I wanted to hear, just because I felt like, well, if we're hearing this voice, I wanted to hear all the voices' point of view and their lifestyles or whatever they lived, and you didn't really hear much of anything other than her. Mm -hmm. And most of the decisions the um, actual person made that were bad, that she should not have made, it was because of this one voice who basically t told her to do all the things she did that were not helpful for her life. I was a little bit confused on the exact role that St. Vincent played. Because I saw a lot of the spirits as a stream of consciousness and, you know, everybody has voices where they're like, you know, if I was to just stand on this bridge, I could kill myself. You know, she had actual spirits in her head telling her to do it because they were out to kill her. But I feel like that's a thing that people go through. And I couldn't really grasp what part St. Vincent might have been. Because it was, you know, and it was confusing what role he actually played in what she was going through. It's the, a Catholic train of thought where they will uh, pray to saints. She explored Christianity and Catholicism. Well, they mutilated uh, her body and they, you know, they made her date women. And mm -hmm. I j it was just, I was a little bit confused with what he was supposed to kind of be representing, I guess. Well, somewhat reflective of uh, Emizi's uh, very own life where okay. Emizi is gender fluid uh, okay. and it seemed like the Ada was becoming gender fluid as well uh, with uh, getting uh, having a uh, she had her breasts removed yes mastectomy oh, mastectomy yes. okay uh, but uh, she uh, Ada did not necessarily that didn't mean she was taking the steps to becoming male it was just yes. taking some steps to becoming less female but yes. not uh, going all the way. Yeah, to... they were making her wear less feminine clothes, mm -hmm. and I think they cut her hair off at one point, and they, they gave her shorter hair. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the full transition, but there's, I mean, I see no problem in what she was doing. I just wish it was of her own accord instead of these spirits that were mm -hmm. controlling her. To me, but... the spirits that were, it was, I saw it very, uh, I saw it more so uh, that they were it was a more uh, clinical. Uh, they were they were more like brain cells yeah. than they were uh, uh, spirits in the way that it was a, a mental. It was like this uh, belief uh, structure because yeah. it seemed very uh, it seemed very scientific and it reminded me of astronomy class where my. Uh, instructors said that we are pretty much just capsules for other, just these living organisms coming together. I know that uh, Larry would freak if he was on the panel, uh, but that was, it, it's a very, it's a very interesting way to explore it because they see Ada as their higher being. Mm -hmm. uh, Ada may think uh, an alternate way, but they think they prioritize basic survival, uh, almost uh, Darwinian. And, and it also shows with how people in a, sp in a particular state, they could very well be very self-valuing to the uh, a less civilized uh, instinct, but fortunately we teach people to be more empathetic of other people and uh, whatnot. Or Banjay is how you would say the... Or Banjay, yeah. Yeah, they're there are spirits that, you know, in that culture, there, there are spirits that actually exist to them. And we don't have those kinds of spirits in, in this culture that we have here in America. Um, but they, they're they known for taking, I guess, taking over for a child that doesn't die at childbirth when they're supposed to. 
so the spirits stay with them and obviously as we've seen in the book and try to kill them and then when the, the the host i guess you can call them does die the spirits stay with the family and kind of create grief and the little translation of obanje is children who come and go mm. so once i was able to kind of separate like this is not a story about her subconscious and what she's going through it's an actual story about this thing in that culture that does exist for them but i didn't know what i was reading at first and i, I was talking with my coworker about it and i was like i don't like this book i have no idea what's happening this is awful i was like maybe 20 30 pages in and i'm like this is horrible mm. i was like i probably would have rated it like a uh, a one out of five i was not enjoying it at all and then she was like well what don't you understand so i went and i looked it up and then it was like okay they're spirits they're evil spirits that attach themselves to people in that culture and then i was like oh, i get it <laughs> so then i was able to read the rest of the book was that 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 in itself was the turning point yeah for me because then i understood what i was reading and i you know there were times in the book where she went to go see a therapist or a psychologist and for these things that she was going through these mental afflictions so then i started to have my doubts i was like no this is she's way too like human she has problems and she's recognizing them that was the turning point though once i actually understood but i did have moments where i was like what? the beginning is confusing yes um yes. until i knew that this was a book written by the voices and the person with the voices that's mm. when I was able to continue reading but the only reason why I kept reading because I was so confused I was trying to figure out what am I reading and yeah. once I realized that's what this was in my opinion I thought it was good in a sense I've never when you read fiction books about mental disease most times they don't have the the voices tell story mm -hmm. it's the person talking about or a person talking about someone with voices mm -hmm. it's never the voices themselves saying this is our side of the story we're going to tell our own story mm -hmm. we're not going to let you it talk was about a unique definitely approach. makes it unique yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. but i think if it wasn't for the fact that uh i watched plenty of videos uh pertaining to uh, book two prize ranking videos because freshwater was a it was one of the top 48 for the book two prize in 2019 and it reached the semi-finals uh people i it was mentioned that it was told from these spirits or beings or organisms that live within ada's body uh cindy uh yeah <laughs> From you. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of thoughts in their bouncing, <laughs> and they're just bouncing it's like because well, pretty much the same way as when I was reading the book, which is like unlike anything I've ever read in my life, and I was both horrified and mystified <laughs> and compelled to keep reading yes. because I just had to because I had to see what was going to happen. It was horrifying. I, it was it, it because I I, when I I saw the correlation between you know, a woman having a journey, and, and I, I was reminded of my psychology classes where I would see, you know, people with alternate personalities, and mm -hmm. so I saw that, and I realized that there was there was a whole thing about the spirit journey as well, but I could see that correlation, I'm like, wow, this is, this, this would really be amazing and overwhelming and terrifying to mm -hmm. live through this, and, and yet at the same time to have the story be told from the points of view of, of all the others were in psychological terms, the altars, but that was that was absolutely fascinating. I could not put that. I read it in two days. Wow, that is some, yeah. <laughs> I would say that viewing it from a psychological standpoint, it is uh, a very brilliant way to see it. I did grow up. Grow up. I grew up. I, I grew into actually liking the book a whole lot. Uh, to the point that I was glad that I bought it instead of borrowing it from you or from the library. Mm. I, I like to own things. I like to hold them. Oh, me too. So I, I was glad that I ended up buying it. It's it a book that I'm proud to have on my shelf. And I did grow from not liking it at all to finally understanding it. And I'm like, this is a very unique perspective on a topic that is not explored very often or in the right way. Because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, people are afraid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I felt like she... Because when you talk about 
someone who hears voices immediately, ooh, stay away yeah, from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she yeah. made you really stop and think about what story. could be the reason why she's had and, and it, has all these voices. And it makes you see things so much differently. differently. And you realize, even if you may think these voices don't exist, for the, in this moment, you get to hear the voices say, we're going to, we have our say and we're going to let you hear what we, what you know, our side of the story. And it really makes you, well, in my opinion, it made me rethink mental health and mm -hmm. not be ashamed of it or be afraid of it you know I always say I hate the fact that if someone says I have cancer the first thing we go is oh I'm so sorry I hope you get better but the moment someone says I'm going to a therapy session it's wrong with you yeah and it's like well people, whether it's physical or mental people need healing and cures they don't need condemnation in the moment and I think this was a great book for hoping people to rethink mental is from the perspective I'm not saying there aren't any books like this but I think this is probably the first one book where the spirits and the voices are talking not mm. the person or someone who knew the person and they kept her from what she needed and what she should have gotten the support systems therapy they took her away from all of that so she was struggling even more than say you or I or anybody would you know we don't have those spirits keeping us away from them so if we were like, hmm, let's go to therapy, I'm not feeling so good, then we could just do it. But all the positive interactions, mm -hmm. even her mother and everybody, the siblings, she was kept away from them and put in these horrible relationships with men who abused her and raped her and did all these terrible things. It was absolutely horrifying and they kept her. It's also worth mentioning though that her family members were perfectly flawed too. Her father was very concerned about making profit. Uh, her mother pretty much had to be away from them uh, here and there. Uh, her brother did push her around. Uh, her younger sister, the one thing that really, the, the one story about her getting uh, hit by the bus. Then how was she okay afterwards? Like, well, that I was I, the first thing I thought was, oh my gosh, she's dead. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. She's going to feel bad that she, she's in trouble. Then when they said she survived, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, yeah, because she, she was in so much pain. And she thought that what they would have to do in order to make her better, she was going to, uh, she, she wouldn't be able to survive. But thankfully, they were able to uh, give her the help she needed. And, uh, she was uh, she was perfectly okay and made she it to adulthood. I don't even know what happened. Like I couldn't get a grasp. Yeah, that was that was one of the challenging things. I think that it was. I think that the the concept and how it was executed was the strongest part of this book. There were parts of the story that were pretty uh, strong, such as her interactions with the people she went to college with, her the friends. The time skips were a little bit ambiguous at mm. times. I was like, okay, how many years went on? They would talk about how she married Ewan, and then they would jump back a little on the past again, and then go back to Ewan when they're not married, and it was like, mm -hmm. what, what was happening? But everything else, especially the conversations in the head, in her head with the other spirits, those are very strong. And if that conversation with Jesus was definitely interesting. Mm. I think <laughs> that the way that they incorporated Jesus and Christianity into this was remarkable. Yes. I, I, I shared some, uh, I, I wrote down some quotes uh, pertaining to that where, uh, because I think she did a, a great job. She refers to Jesus as uh, Yeshua. Accurately. Kindness that. and full of love and yes. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Just the whole idea that uh, she put her belief into him because of the simple message of love, not necessarily because of the practices, the religion, and the, the church, uh, the, the whole idea that, uh, and yet the we uh, has a more non-religious, it's more about basic survival, as I mentioned before. Uh, I was not having it with Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Asagara was not having it. Didn't want anything to do with him. Yeah, Asagara was pretty much uh, a representative of uh, just reckless lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, experimentation, uh, sin, allowing people to take advantage. Do we have any final thoughts? Well, I wanted to, um, earlier, when you were asking me to understand St. Vincent, I saw it as her saying the actual human being saying that 
she wasn't gay, but this male spirit, when it entered her, she had to do what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And because he wanted women. sex with women, that's what she did. And then she changed her appearance to be like St. Vincent. And it seems like the whole, the entire, not that I'm trying to be negative, the whole book was saying, I'm doing all of these horrible things to my life because of these spirits are telling me, and I have no control over them. And it's, even when you were referring to Jesus, every time she had that moment with him, she knew she needed him, but because she was enjoying the acts she was doing, she was fighting going with him, and instead going with these spirits. Um, and Jesus was a big part of her growing but, up. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that was yeah, was she um, back when she was in Africa before she moved. Mm -hmm. Anyone watching, I think you should read it because it's it was definitely. I think the reason why it was an awe for me because when you read when you start reading a book, the first thing you're thinking is this is someone telling a story about themselves or this is someone telling a story about someone else. So when you start reading it, it it's a spirit. You're like, what the <laughs> heck am I reading here? <laughs> And I, I think it really captures you because it makes you stop to think, like, what is this? This is not the normal book I'm used to reading. Yeah. And I don't know how many pages I was in before it really, where I read, oh, that's what, the, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, this is, wow, this is, but I liked it because it was different. Right. You know, it was unexpected and it was, it really made you stop and think about mental health and say because we all hear I don't want to say voices but every now and again you'll hear you probably shouldn't do that you know that's not good no, like the devil on your shoulder the so demon and the yeah angel. like the angel and the devil but it really makes you stop and think because of maybe the way someone grew up their voices are different from you mm -hmm. and you shouldn't judge them or look at them in a condescending way because they're dealing with the only thing I didn't like was and I know it doesn't always happen this way. But I said to myself, if she would have just stayed in therapy, if she would have just stayed in therapy, <laughs> things would have, you know, she would have kept her marriage, et cetera, et cetera. But in the same breath, it's like, with that, you really, in real life, you really can't mm. predict that. Mm -hmm. But that was the first thing I thought, well, why didn't you stay in therapy? Mm. But uh, the one also, another thing that interested me was the, uh, the beings inside her saw the... Uh, the python as one of them at the very beginning. What I saw it as is the fact that pretty much uh, enhancing my living organisms theory is the fact that all uh, all living creatures are one and the same. It, it almost seemed like the living beings within the Eta and the living beings within the python were peers of one another. It all depends on how you see things, but that's the, uh, the view that I took. Once her dad kills the python, uh, you don't see as much. Sometimes uh, referenced, but I think that's what they're referring to here, the two-headed snake on the front of the cover. That's but. the other thing. When I fresh water and snakes, you're like, what is this book? Yes. <laughs> you're like, what could this possibly be about? <laughs> and so I thought the everything from the cover design, from the actual story, I just thought it was a very interesting read. Goodreads had it ranked as the number one book that they felt would uh, likely get nominated for uh, the Booker Prize, but it wasn't one of the nominees. Uh, with Booker, they had to pick two winners because they wanted to incorporate uh, the, the, uh, the Testaments by Margaret Atwood as one of the winners. Uh, your final thoughts, Cindy? Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, how would we rate this? Uh, zero to five stars, half stars permitted, Casey? Oh, um, I hate, I hate to say five stars because I know everyone always says, oh, no book could ever be five stars, but I'm still a newbie in reading. Mm. I'm still a newbie in reading, and the only reason why I say five stars is because I like a book when I start reading it, it makes me go, what is this about? Mm -hmm. And it, it keeps you intrigued, and the, the, I like the uniqueness of it that the spirits talking, telling most of the book and not the person or someone who knows the person. Because sometimes even mental health fiction is someone talking about someone they know. But these are the actual spirits. And so, mm -hmm. I'll say a 4.8. <laughs> okay. well, everybody has their own rating system. But, uh, yeah, it was know. definitely a book I enjoyed. I'm actually going to bump it down to a 
three out of five. It was not my type of book. Um, not, not to say that I didn't enjoy it, because I did. I liked reading it a lot. But it's not the kind of book that I would pick up on a shelf and like read the back and be like, ooh, I wonder what this is about. And if I did, and then I bought it, and I started to read it, I would probably put it back down. I only read it because I had to. <laughs> but I did end up really liking it. Um, and, you know, it tackled things that no one really ever does. I'm going to have to go with the three, and I feel bad because you liked it so much. That's... I know. You have to feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, was, it wasn't my type, but I appreciate the style. I appreciate how it was written. It was really compelling. I did want to keep reading more, but I wouldn't, I didn't enjoy it as much as I know I can enjoy books. I mean, I, that makes sense. I've, I've let down everybody that likes Titus Andronicus <laughs> on the show, so this, that's perfectly okay. I enjoyed it, but I know I know what it feels like in my heart when a book is a five, and I just didn't get there with this one. Yeah. So, okay. Cindy? Um, I've got to give a four. I'll give a four. Uh, even though it's not something that I would ever buy other than to do something here with you. Uh, you mean for a book club? Probably for a book club, and that would probably be it. Um, but it was compe both compelling, and I was hooked from the first paragraph. And, I mean, like I said before, I read it in two days. I mean, that's a major hook. Mm. So, on subject matter, definitely, and the way it held my attention for two days, yeah, definitely four. I, I agree with you. I, I'm going to give it a four as well because... Now I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought that the the concepts, I think that the uh, execution of point of view, I think that the elaboration of ideas, the uh, exploration of beings that the we, the uh, Asagara way that uh, Yeshua was approached was brilliant. I think that the story itself was a bit watery and inconsistent. Uh, I think that there were parts of it that were strong, but yet uh, nothing that really uh, wowed me incredibly. Uh, but I still think that this is a book that's definitely worth reading. And it's pretty brief. as well. It's only, in, this version is 226 pages uh, if you're getting the trade paperback, which, if you're interested, uh, here it is a copy. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos from our channel, and be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh, and on the next episode of Literary Gladiators, Casey, Kayla, Cindy, and I will be discussing uh, Cream by Haruki Murakami. Uh, if you like what you see on our channel, please support us on our Patreon account. Uh, the more money that we have, uh, the more material that we can provide for you, the viewer. Be sure to join us, and for now, keep reading.